Okay, in this video I want to look at a slight generalization of the Chinese remainder theorem. So I'll just remind you the Chinese remainder theorem. And this is the Chinese remainder theorem in a very, very special case where we only have uh, a system of two uh, modular equivalences or modular congruences. But um, this can be generalized to n or k uh, congruences and this theorem that I will present will, can also be generalized to k congruences, although I won't do that here. So the Chinese remainder theorem says the following. So if we have relatively prime um, numbers m and n, then this system, x is congruent to a mod m and x is congruent to b mod n, it has a unique solution modulo the product m times n. So what we want to look at is the question of what if this GCD is not equal to 1? Are we guaranteed to have a solution? And what is that solution unique modulo with respect to? And so we'll answer both of those questions. And uh, the statement of that result goes as follows. So the system given by x is congruent to a mod m and x is congruent to b mod n has a solution if and only if um, the GCD of M and N divides A minus B. Great, and if there is a solution, this solution is unique modulo the least common multiple. So this solution, if it exists, is unique mod the LCM of A and B. Great. So uh, notice that if the GCD is 1, well, 1 divides any number. Um, so that's why there's always a solution in that case. And then if the GCD is 1, then the LCM is equal to just the product. So in fact, if you have 1 as the GCD of M and N, this collapses to the special case of the Chinese remainder theorem where we have two linear congruences. Great. So... Uh, Let's look at the proof. So it's an if and only if statement. So we have two things to prove. So let's prove in this direction first. So let's suppose x is a solution to, and then let's maybe number this thing up here. Let's say that's equation number one. Okay? So what that means is that x is congruent to a mod m and x is congruent to b mod n. So that means that m divides x minus a and n divides x minus b. Cool. So that means we can write x minus a is equal to m times k1 where k1 is some integer, and then we can write x minus b equals n times k2, where again, k2 is some integer. Great, so that's the definition of divisibility. And now what we want to do is subtract these two equations until we form this quantity a minus b. So let's do that. So that looks like we're going to need to do the second equation minus the first equation. So that will give us a minus b is equal to n k2 minus m k1. Great. So now notice this is a linear combination of m and n. So let's write that down. This is a linear combo of m and n. So that's like definitely true, but uh, by a previous result, we know that all linear combinations of m and n are multiples of the GCD of m and n. So that means this is a multiple of the GCD of m and n. So I've got a uh, 
proof on the channel where we prove that, it's not so easy to, it's not so hard to prove. So that's a multiple of the GCD of M and N, which means that this equals, let's call it maybe K prime times the GCD of M and N, which tells us that the GCD of M and N in fact does divide A minus B. Great. So I'll clean up this proof, then we'll look at the other direction, and then when we're done with the other direction, we will finally prove this uniqueness statement. Okay, now we'll look at the other direction of this statement. So let's suppose that the GCD of M and N equals, sorry, divides A minus B. So what that tells us is the following. That tells us that A minus B equals some multiple of the GCD. So that tells us this is maybe K times the GCD of M and N. Now the next thing that we'll do is use the fact that the GCD of M and N can be written as a linear combination of M and N. So let's do that. So that means K, uh, that means that's equal to K times a linear combination of M and N. Let's maybe write it as M times U plus N times V for U and V being some integers. So we know that's possible. So that process uses something called the extended Euclidean algorithm, but we'll just use the fact that it's possible in this case. So now let's notice that this, this is equal to M times U prime, and I'll let U prime be K times U, so I will absorb those together, plus N times V prime, and let's just write U prime equals K U, and V prime equals K V, so we have some, some simplicity here. Okay, now the next thing that we want to notice is that we have um, A minus M U prime equals B plus N V prime. Great. And now if we let this quantity equal x, notice we have two different versions of writing x. We have x equals a minus m u prime, and we have x equals b plus n v prime. But now notice that means if we reduce this modulo m, we get x is congruent to a mod m. Because there we have a multiple of m which is zero, and x is congruent to b mod n. Again, because here we have a multiple of n which is zero. Great, so now we've proven that if we start with this divisibility relationship, we get a solution, and in fact, we were able to construct that solution. So the last thing we need to prove is this uniqueness. Okay, so all that's left is to prove the uniqueness of the solution. So let's suppose, x1 and x2 are solutions. Great. So uh, what that tells us is that x1 minus x2 is congruent to 0 mod m. So um, how do we see that? Well, what we can do is see that x1 is congruent to a mod m and x2 is congruent to a mod m so we can subtract them and get this and x1 minus x2 is congruent to 0 mod n. Great, but what that tells us is that um, x1 minus x2 is a multiple of m and n so that tells us that M divides X1 minus X2 and N divides X1 minus X2. But then by the property or by the definition of the LCM, that tells us that the LCM of M and N divides X1 minus X2, which tells us that X1 uh, minus X2 is congruent to zero mod the LCM of M and N. Good.
which finally tells us that x1 is congruent to x2 mod the LCM of M and N, which was our goal.